I haven't even seen his video myself yet, but um, I guess uh, the, the whole idea of it is can men know true love in 2024? Will a man really understand? And I, I'm sure he got like his little advertisement or his sponsorship in there. True love. Because when you identify those things, it was how can I benefit from the situation? He has, he has high status. I have high status. Right. I'm have a business. I'm a, it looks, it, it matches that. So to my point, when I'm saying I can make a woman in regards to that, I see way too many times a high value man takes a low functioning woman or a low value woman and increase her status overnight. Now, it's still a process. It's still a level right. of submission from both sides, right. not just a female side, right. but also the male side. And also, there's a patience that goes into that to be like, yo. Wait, hold on, depending on the negotiation. Because mm -hmm. some of that stuff, I'm saying, could move fast because everyone's negotiation process is different. You For know what sure. I mean, Cam? Meaning if, if we come in, in saying, okay, Cam, this is a strategic dating thing, we both know it. We gonna have this all planned out. We just gonna hit these points. Meaning that would come into fruition a lot sooner because mm -hmm. we're clear on the plan. Versus right. if I came in without you knowing my plan. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Cam, yeah, hey, hey, hey. It may be a little longer process, I agree. Drinking and driving, the only sober. And the man thing, which I love, that will a man ever really experience true love? Right. My answer to that two-part answer, one, I'm not a man. Right. And I, um, I believe that a woman should stay in her place when it comes to answering men's question from a place of being the source mm -hmm. and instead say my opinion. Just like I think a man also should stay in his place when answering questions about us because y'all not us, you don't know. But you can say in my opinion, in my experience or what I think. So I would hope that men could experience real love. Um, however, I believe that it would take more than a high functionality. It would take more than high valueness. Mm -hmm. It would take um, more than being able to come in and you know make a woman or make a man, whoever we want them to be. Being in love and feeling and experiencing that fully is more about how open and vulnerable we have already allowed ourselves to be with ourselves. Right. Right, so meaning I receive love from you at the level of receptivity I already am when I come and meeting you. Whether it's friendship, business, romantic, you can't love me deeper than I love myself. Let me word that better. You can feel the love deeper for me than I love myself. I won't receive it and feel it past the level that I love myself. Yes, ma'am. So. Any thoughts on this uh, with the foundation of the question saying, can men experience true love in 2000 or how, how can men experience true love in 2024 if, if it's even possible? And do you think that what she's saying is true or do you have a difference of opinion of what she's saying right now? I, I think the, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know that this has anything to do with the relationship with the woman per se, but I'll, the, the whole conversation of love, like everyone, like what is love? You know what I mean? Just like at a baseline, what is love? I feel like I've never felt the most love is from my child. You know what I mean? Really? And I don't think I, I yes, from my child. Like like what I feel when I look at my child, when I look at her in the, in the eyes, like that's what I feel like love is. And I feel it from her. I see it, how she acts towards me, like all of it. Yeah. From my little age. And yeah. I've never, I don't, I don't think that I've ever felt that with like a woman. I know it's like a different kind of love, but the, the whole notion of being in love is like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that. Really? I, I think you don't believe it. You I, don't I, believe I, in being in love. I don't think as humans, I don't think it's humanly possible to, to be in love. I don't, I, I think as we're a man too or just in general, in general, I think we're too selfish. Like what's the Bible? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is, uh, it's not haughty, selfish, or rude. All that. And, and, and Nate, that's in, that's in human. That's who we are. We're all of what, all of what love is, isn't in us at all. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, 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 I agree and disagree with, with what you were just saying. Um, on the first half, it's, 
in my opinion, with your child, it's because it's unconditional. Meaning there's nothing that you have done outside of, you know, giving your child life, which they haven't even come to that concept yet. They just know how they feel with you, right? And so it's it's really unconditional. So and, and they talk about that with women as well because women I don't think we tend to love unconditionally. And I'm not saying that we never can or never do. I'm is that, that all women or is that just a, in a general most that, women? That's 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 most women. Like if not almost all. And it's only because it's only because women live a lot of their just natural instincts based off survival so if you are so intertwined with this one man and your survival is at risk are you gonna are you gonna take your 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 survival over what you feel for him so i think that's the natural dynamic that women struggle with right because if this man isn't good for you at all like, are you still going to hang, hang in there because you feel something for him? So that that's something that, you know, of course, men are not going to be able to uh, feel. And I think on the flip side that I think men, the reason why probably things, and this is just my opinion because I'm not a man, but I think the reason why a lot of things uh, bother men more, you know, when y'all say, hey, I'm never going to take her back if she cheats or anything like that, because... At the end of the day, you are essentially given everything, right? And women necessarily all the time we don't we don't have to we don't have to give give everything to get everything. Like a lot of the times, men have to be all in, and so to me, it probably hurts more when you're all in and certain things happen. I do think that when men love harder in a lot of yeah. instances, but I don't, I think that the, well, let me go back to what Quentin was saying. Quentin said he don't, he don't understand the concept of in being in love. Mm. So you don't Is think that like, you've ever experienced that with any woman that you've ever dealt with in your entire life? I don't think so, but I, I thought it in the moment, but then when you see something different, you're like, that, that really wasn't it. You know what I mean? So, and I just think like, I feel like love happens. These are all like fleeting emotions. Like they come and they go like type of thing. And I think love is such a strong emotion that someone can't feel that, oh, I can't be in love with someone all day, every day. And mm. just the concept of the word love, it's not possible. Cause if you're, if you love someone, it never goes away. Like if you're in love so with someone- So you don't think that you can be mad at somebody but still love them or be in love with them? No, or you could be disappointed and still <laughs> no, be in love I, I with them. Really, you just it's just like maybe this is me. Maybe they maybe I'm telling on myself. <laughs> like some of the stuff that goes through my head with this person I think I love, and I was like, that's not love. Like even though it don't come out of my mouth, it don't come out of my actions, but the pure fact that I thought it, it's not love. Mm. This well, I understand what you're saying, because this is one of those situations where you can't, you can't, I can't dispute or debate your experiences. You know what I'm saying? Because only you know what you felt. Yeah. So I think it's different. Um, I think that men can and men do often at times fall hard for, and I think that's a, one of the reasons why they make so many sacrifices. That is the definition of love. Like the fact that yeah. certain men put you first before themselves is the very definition of love. And I, and I hate the fact that I always got to go back to the Bible itself, but that is the definition so, of love. love. I, I love, love you. It's an action. It's not a feeling. It can be both. I, I was about to, I was just about to say that. It, yeah, because um depending on who you're talking to and depending on you know the person and things like that like i i can i can say i can have this feeling and it's just like i'm i'm in awe of you outside of lust right and i have 
this unwavering connection with you, right? And then to me, men do more so the, the I'm in love with you action type. I, I will say, I, go ahead, Mika, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, my, you know, just from watching the men in my family, I, I, most of the time, I rarely heard them say uh, to, you know, my mom, my grandma, my great grandma, oh, yeah, I love you, I love you, I love you. But every day, no matter what, you, they could be dog tired. They were going to make sure nothing went wrong. To me, somebody that can sacrifice themselves knowing they might drop dead, you can't tell me that's not love. I'll go further. Like, I don't think that you can be hurt by somebody that you don't love. Yeah, I get it. I, I guess there's there's just so many levels to love. I think so. I think it's layers to it. Um, it's just and then, like, I it also depends on the context and like who you're receiving the love from as well. But given this conversation, I'm um, thinking it's an intimate partner, and that's the that's the love that I can't I can't really wrap my head around. I I no. think that you can't be hurt by somebody that you don't love. Mm -hmm. You don't think so? No. I mean, I no. mean, I could, I could be wrong. I, I, I think you can't be. I think if you care, you could be hurt, and just because you care, don't mean you love. Mm -mm. I, I, don't I can know. care I about a I lot of things, but you. that don't mean that you can hurt me uh, emotionally as a result of it. Because I've cared about someone; they did some fuck nigga shit, and I'm like, oh, like it kind of hurt, but I didn't love them. <laughs> but you did to like, a point. No, I didn't. Like it wasn't. So can you be hurt by a man? Like I don't like men, and like. And if like one of my friends did something you can to me, love like, and you, and you, you can don't love think that it? you could love a friend? That don't mean that you oh, could be. Yeah, yeah, it's a right, different right. type of love, right? It's I just don't. No, go ahead. Go I think you. I, I. I don't think it takes love to hurt someone. I don't. I don't think that. It, it has to. You have to have some type of. You have to have some caring. Type of love. No, no. I care. I care about. You can care about um, your like. To me, caring is fleeting. Right, like one minute I care up? about whether, no, because it, that's a little harder, right? If you actually love somebody, that's a little harder, right? Because if I care about, I care about this job, right? But tomorrow I might not give a damn about this job. Mm -hmm. Well, love too. Right? No, that people doesn't. Fall no, out of, you, people fall out of don't, love. They don't, and they don't the do time. it the next day. They don't do it the next day. I can get a better job and say. Mm, I don't give a damn about this job. <laughs> so what's the what's the time frame of the fleeting? Like fleeting just means it comes. I'm not, and goes. I, I don't have a I don't have a time frame, but there is time there. That's all I'm saying. Like a day, you're not going to switch your mind in a day. If Quentin, if I if I'm paying you fifty thousand dollars, and then another person says, "Hey, I can pay you two hundred grand right now," you not gonna care about that job. I assure you, you're not gonna care about it. And you probably cared about it yesterday because it was paying your bills. But I if you will, really love, you if you really love what you do, like I don't know, I, I don't know something that you, you like riding bikes. If you if you really love that thing, you would do it for free. Yep, that's true. That's true. That's true. That is one hundred percent true. All right, so let me ask y'all another question before I read these two chats <laughs> and take these calls, and then we wrap this up. Um, would you consider yourself very emotional? Do you, would y'all consider yourselves emotional? I mean, I know everybody has emotions, but there's tend to, they tend to be people. I know Mika is emotional. I ain't even going, <laughs> but we'll dig into that. Do, would y'all consider yourselves emotional? Yeah. Mika is yes. Mika is very emotional. <laughs> I think so. Do you think you're emotional, Quentin? I'm emotional, but I have, I'm in control of them. <laughs> well, do you do you think that you are more more emotional than what we tend to let on publicly? Um, like, are you the type of person that wear your emotions on your sleeve? No, no. Even even no, if you learned how to control, out. even if you learned how you how to control how you let that 
out into the wor world or your decision making process? No, 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 no. Then I guess I would say I'm not emotional. Mm -mm. I got you. I got you. What about you, Mika? What are your What are your thoughts? I wear my emotions on my sleeve, my face. Mm hmm. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> she. No, I, 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 but I would say if you're emotional, that means you have no control. That, that's that's what I that's what I think. Like no, if no, you no, have emotions. No. No, that doesn't emotion. mean that you don't have control, but it could just mean that you are a very emotional person. Because we all got emotions. Every single person in the world got emotions. But you could tend to be a lot more emotional, but you can still train yourself to control whether or right. not you make a, a decision based a off decision of decision based emotions. off of it, yes. Well, and, there, there's a song that by C.C. Winans and Donnie McClurkin, and every time I hear that song and listen to the words, like I start crying. Like I can't mm. stop it's like, I'm like, what's going on? But what because was that? What would you call? Emotional. What would you call that? That's emotional. It's emotional. It's, it's emotional. It evoke, it invokes something in you. It spoke to something. So that means you, I'm emotional. Right? It, it doesn't mean that you crashing out because of that. You're not gonna go and drive oh, yeah. your motorcycle off the freeway just because you heard the song. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But it doesn't. But you could be emotional. Have an emotional type of person. Okay. And, and, and somebody in the chat said, "Do Mika uh, Mika cries?" Yeah, oh, oh, I sure do. I have no. <laughs> I, 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 I feel it. better. I, I feel better after I do because literally, <laughs> yeah. once I cry, I don't have it. That's the thing. A lot Ooh. of people do, right? I think I, what I do like about being emotional is this, right? Because I don't let it control the situation. That's why I do cry, right? But I think a lot of the times, people when they're not emotional. Or they don't have any type of, you know, remnants of just letting it go. They hold on to it, and it's a weight, and it's a weight, and it's a weight. If I don't like something, I go cry in the car, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then I'm good. <laughs> and then I'm good. You know. Oh, that is pretty funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny. It's okay. That's an interesting okay. thing. I'll say that though. I used to when my um. We were together for nine years, and, and she was in Germany for like two years of the nine. I used to go in the bathroom and cry like once a week. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to like, I just like need to get it out real quick. <laughs> That's pretty good. Why is it that when you hear that song in, that song in particular, what is it about that song? Uh -huh. It's just like, I don't know. I mean, every time I think about it, like, I'll I, I be wanting to say that. I'll be like, what's going on? Like, I get embarrassed and I'll be by myself. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It'd be like, it'd be like that sometimes. My dad, my dad, yeah, my dad said, like, because he, he saw it happen before. He was like, it's okay. You know, I'm like that too. Let me read. Like, I don't know. Like, I think, I think my dad. Like, I have a real good dad. Like, he, he, he let me know it's okay to express. So yeah, uh, like my dad, like told me he loved me growing up and stuff and all that type of stuff. So it's all good. Yeah. Shout out. Usually it's a uh, something that people remember or it was a moment that a specific song is referenced to that then drives whatever that emotion is, um, you know, or whatever happens to people's lives. I could, When I hear certain songs, it takes me back to certain times in my life that I heard that song. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even That even resonates with me with certain albums. Like, there's certain albums... Mm -hmm. um, that's why was, that's why music is so subjective, because like it's yeah. hard to say what is the greatest albums of all time, or what is the greatest rap album, what is the greatest singing sound albums. <laughs> it's hard to do that because you would have to be there when that was released or to see it. Like I I could imagine mm. that the first time motherfucker seen Michael Jackson Moonwalk, you know what I'm saying? That that shit probably hit different than somebody for the first time listening to Thriller today. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a different time. When I was listening to Mob D, The Infamous, or, you know, when Coldplay comes on, or when Thug Motivation 101 comes on, that takes me to different times of my life that then drive me to 
you know, when I hear that, it automatically, tr when I hear Candles in the Sun by Miguel, right? Candles in the Sun by Miguel reminds me of my father because it was the first song that I heard um, after I had found out that he had passed away. So when that song comes on and it comes on in my playlist, just when I have it on shuffle every few months, it's like when he first sing that song and he said, is there a God? You know what I'm saying? Is he watching? That song takes me to a moment, which then drives an emotion. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's meaningful in that way, right? So our lives, in my opinion, is just made up of fleeting moments that turn into memories that then drive us to do certain things. But also ultimately, it pulls down certain things in us that normally you dealing with things on a regular basis, especially if you're a man, that you wouldn't normally deal with because we're conditioned. We're conditioned to to we're conditioned to bury that shit. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and it and it's for good reason because yeah. the world don't give a fuck about you and they don't care about your emotions. You know what I'm saying? So but all of those times and those moments, they drive. They drive something out of you and it takes you back to a time, whether it be in your childhood or something that you dealt with or something that you liked, it all hits a certain way. And that's why that's why it's so difficult to even argue with music about music in particular, because music is very, very, very much closely tied to an emotion. Man, music is like powerful, man. Like it is. I don't even know the name of this song, but every time I hear this specific song, I can't even think of it right now. It puts me in my upstairs bedroom middle school i got suspended from the football game talking to candace <laughs> <laughs> every time i hear this song that's what it's like it's like yeah, yeah. yeah music is powerful man yeah mm -hmm. yeah but it does it very much does so no it, it, it definitely does it definitely does speak to you but i mean i think art in general like if you look at a painting and then somebody else looks at it yeah. Depending on what's going on in their head, they see something different. But yeah. I think I also think like I like you know I like our little spirited debates. But I I think the beauty in it is everybody got something out of it, whether they liked it or not. Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. But I mean, even but us my doing favorite this, one is Nas. One yeah, might even us doing this uh this show. You know, after a while, we've been doing this show. We come to be family after so long. You know what I'm saying? To the point to where when we see each other in person, we genuinely feel something towards a person. Like, man, what up, man? I love... Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it. You spend enough time around people, whether you're in these fucking boxes or, you know, you start to connect with people in real life. When we was all together in Houston and yeah. shit, that shit was like family. Real talk. I'm like, not it was never say this but i thought q hated me till i saw no, her q person. love you q love you because <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a little sister <laughs> yep. you said what because she wouldn't have said she wouldn't have said anything if remember how we were just saying if you didn't yep. love somebody you wouldn't say she kept dragging on it she just put into the cave put into the cave yeah so and it, it, it does like it, it, it's meaningful you know what i'm saying so even even Quentin, like when Quentin was saying, Quentin was talking about a long time ago. It was like, yeah, man, I gotta go to the doctor. That shit bothered Rita. Yeah. That shit bothered her. It it bothered Rita. Rita was like, uh, what's Quentin's phone number? We need to get him on the phone. 